So I bought this used GT bicycle for $20. It's all steel, probably made in the early 2000s. And today we're going to try to fix it up using most of the original parts that we have that we see right on it today, because I don't want to invest too much money into this bike. And the reason I don't want to invest too much money into it is because it's actually on the low end of these GT bikes. Now I didn't really know there was a low end per se on these bikes, but there is. And you can see right here, it says 100% high high tensile steel so it's a it's a low grade steel has low grade has a lower grade drivetrain you have the grip uh, shifters so it's definitely you know a step or two above a walmart bike or a department store bike but it's definitely on the lower end of the gt range at that time so with that in mind all i'm going to try to do today is fix this bike up as nice as i can with the parts that it has as you can see, it's in pretty miserable condition, but as I mentioned, this is a, you know, spend no money if possible type of build. So I'm going to try to reuse this chain. Ooh, even leaves. Yeah, like I said, it was sitting outside. I just started using the Evapo Rust and uh, I'm not really sure what to think about it yet, um, but I think it, you know, it obviously works. So. But is it really good for chains? I'm not sure. I want to get this as low as I can so I don't have to use as much of the Evapo Rust. I like to get it completely flat if possible. This stuff is about ten dollars just for this little bottle so i don't want to waste any it does say on that you can use it multiple times well we might as well go ahead and take the wheel off because obviously the wheel tape is falling apart and coming out so go ahead and take this wheel off and retape it with some electrical tape because i don't have any wheel tape i will pump it up and see if the inner tube actually holds air the tires, I mean, they're definitely cheapo, but I think they're in fine condition. I don't even see any cracks. That came out super easy. So I added a little bit of air to the inner tube and it pretty much immediately went flat. There's a pretty sizable hole on the inside, which I suspect is due to the fact that the tire tape was missing or coming out. So it probably got poked from inside. While looking over the, the wheel and the hub in general, I can feel that the bearings actually aren't quite in good condition here. So I'm gonna to try to service them and for the hub itself, try to uh, get it rolling a little bit smoother. Now sometimes these can be pretty tight. Yep, that's very tight. Oh man, that one is super tight. I'm sure I'm not the only person who's used electrical tape is wheel tape and I haven't had to do it too many times. Most of the wheels I've ever had have had good tape, but I have done this a couple times and I haven't yet had any issues with it. But I don't feel like I have enough experience to say for sure if it's a great thing to do or not. Okay, I don't have any kind of bar that's actually gonna fit over the end of this crescent wrench. But I do have this super cheap and already bent up 19 millimeter, which is the size we need. And I do have this seat post. This will go onto here. And uh, here we go. Let's try. Something's bending, but I think it might be the wrench. Yeah, I don't think it's, uh, <laughs> that's not working good. I think we're actually bending up. Yeah, I think, 
yeah, I think we're bending the uh, this wrench open. That's all we're doing here, unfortunately. Yep, that's not going to work. This is getting bent. Okay. Now we know it doesn't work. And we ruined a perfectly crappy wrench anyway. Okay, I did it off camera, so uh, I'm going to recreate the scene here <laughs> so you can see what I did. But basically, I rolled the tire up to the wall to kind of lock it down. That way you can really push all my force down on it like that, right? And so I did, and I was pushing real hard, still wasn't budging. So then I had the idea to reach my foot over like that. I started kind of getting all my weight on it and kind of bouncing, and then suddenly it just broke loose. So that was the trick. Let's go ahead and get it off the rest of the way. All right, here's the ball bearings, and luckily there's an even number, which means, you know, hopefully I didn't lose any. If I had like 17, there's 18, by the way. If I had like 17 of them or something, I'd be a little bit concerned. Give them, uh, now they're looking pretty nice, right? It's, it's apparently just a press fit, but it's press fit into aluminum with sheet metal. It's, it's gonna be risky, I think, to take off, so I'm just gonna try to do this. You know that if you get the grease in there right, it'll kind of work as a, <laughs> a temporary glue. Not exactly glue, but uh, it'll hold them in there. You know, it'll hold them in there. So I have to do nine on each one. That's one each side, rather. That's two. All right, I got all nine on that side, on this side rather, and uh, this is the side that this part came out of. So I'm going to do it the same way. It's the threaded side. So I'm just going to drop that right through there. Okay. And when this meets it, it should lock them in. Okay, yeah, that's it. There we go. So this side is locked in. Keep pressure on it so they don't fall. I think we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and plop those last eight in there. bike is very original. It still has this uh, chain guard. It also has like the original uh, warning stickers all over it. Looks like it was very lightly modified with just maybe you know the original bike shop that sold it. Actually as a matter of fact I think I did see right here the bike shop that sold it. So it wasn't a department store bike at all. 770 area code. I don't know where that is. That's where it was bought from. Now a lot of people will say to use an air compressor to slide on uh, grips because you know slide on grips can be really hard to get on but I don't have an air compressor so what I've been using and it works pretty good in my opinion is just soapy water. I just have dish soap in here and water. Just spray it on like that and it'll pretty much uh, you know with some quite a bit of push in it'll They'll go on. Make sure I get them on the right way. Just kind of twist and push, and then the soap itself will dry up. There we go. It's fully on. Now these these shifters do need to come in a little bit or out a little bit. Hey, Chris. Okay, I had to step away for a few hours. Actually, yeah, it's been about four hours since I put this in, and it's. The rust is, I think, mostly gone, but it's just kind of black. It's also loosened up a lot. I don't know if it's if that would be considered done or not. I think it might be done. I'm going to take them out and give them a little brushing. See what it looks like then. Okay, I'm pretty much done with the chain. It's not perfect, of course, but it's pretty darn good. It's all loose. It looks fairly clean. So I think that's going to do. I think the next thing I want to tackle is the handlebar. It has quite a bit of little spot surface rust, I would call. Let me show you what I mean by that. It's like freckled with this, with this rust. It looks pretty bad. It's, I mean, it's almost all gone. I'm sure with more time I could, I could finish that. 
So anyway, I'm gonna try to sand these bars up and uh, see how good I can get them. I'll come back in a minute. All right, it sure looks a lot better. Not perfect, but a lot better. Okay, here we are back in the shop. It's the next morning, which allowed me to think about the project a little bit more rather than just building it out. And it's always interesting what you find or what you think about, you know, kind of overnight when you're sleeping or when you're kind of just having some time to think. And one thing, big thing that came to mind is I have to change these pedals. I know the idea of the build was to just, you know, use what I have in terms of parts and whatnot and, and even just the bike itself, zero dollar build, but these are just too pitiful. The other thing I did off camera was those rusty um, rear brake bolts, I don't know what to call them, brake pad bolts, I guess. I went ahead and painted them and I'm glad I did because they look way better, as you can see. The other thing I did uh, off camera yesterday, and I know it's ugly, I, I know, I'm not proud of this one, but I spray painted the, the exposed foam in the area on the saddle. I know, it's ugly. It's not, it's not a great thing that I did. I'm not proud of it or anything, but it does look slightly better than what it did, I believe, with just you know a bunch of yellow foam. Found a weird thing I've never actually seen before, and it was like that when I got the bike. This isn't like just now happening. So when I pull the, <clears throat> the lever, it's kind of, jumping. See that? It's not a smooth action. And you may be able to see what's going on. What it is, is the spring here. It's like, first it's alongside the body of the lever, and then as it moves it pops out, and it's rubbing. And I don't know why that is. The other ones aren't doing that. You guys know I can't do one video, one bike build video, without using files. So here we go. Uh, I couldn't figure out why that's rubbing. It looks like it might have been doing it for a while, so I'm just going to try to take off some of this area to just make it make it work. Okay, that was almost too easy, and now it works perfectly. Perfectly smooth action. Very nice. All right, here's my new cable. Okay, fresh new brake cable. All right, I got them both pulling with about the same power. Okay, one of the last things I'm gonna to need to do today is get this, get this fixed. This rear wheel is pretty out of true. But I think it's acceptable at least. We're rolling, the brakes are working good. That's just gonna to have to do. So we happened to be going to the sporting goods store today and I came across these Bell Sport Pedals Kix 750s. They're just some kind of uh, aluminum, I believe, uh, kind of mountain bike BMX type pedal. Only $20, so I thought these were, were going to be perfectly appropriate for this build. I'm going to go ahead and take them out, install them on the bike and see how they look. Okay, a little update. After looking at these closer, I can actually tell you they are not aluminum but plastic but they still look great and I think they're a huge improvement over the uh, those ugly plastic ones I had before. Although I know $20 is the same amount that I spent for the whole bike. Okay, the build is complete and I gotta say I couldn't be happier for a weekend budget build. I really only worked on this Saturday and then today a little bit Sunday. And it's, I mean, it's a nice looking bike for how little I've spent on it. So like I said, let's go over the cost. We have uh, 20 bucks for the bike itself, another 20 for the pedal, so that's 40. Now I did add on these grip shifts, uh, grip, grip shift grips, <laughs> and 
end caps. Now these I already had, you could just say $5, so we're now at 45. I don't know. I mean, I had a whole bunch of these end things and it was probably five for a dozen or so. Um, so let's just say another $2, so we're $47. I did add a new brake cable, another $2, because again, it was a set of more. So maybe $49. Uh, oh, one of these little elbows, say another dollar. So we're at 50 bucks. And I think that's it for parts that I added on. So that's, let's just say about $50. And I think for $50, this is a really, I mean, I'm serious, like, this is a great bike. Okay, I think it's about time to end this video. I just got done doing a 10 kilometer ride on the old GT and wow, that was a lot of fun. It's, um, you know, it has lower end components. It has a grip shifter, all the rest. But uh, when you're flying down the gravel roads, you don't even think about that. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. So I think it's a cool bike. Prove that you can have a lot of fun on bikes and actually ride something that's in a way actually nice and have a lot of fun for very little money. So anyway, I think that's about it. That's all I need to say about that on this video. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.